Father, we thank you for this we opportunity you, to be at your feet. You. Holy Ghost, we welcome we thank you. Lord. Yeah, Father, Lord. teach to me, preach to oh, me, Jesus, use me, O oh, mighty God. My use Jesus, me for your glory, God, for your King. glory and your honor. Oh, Father, Jesus. let me decrease and you increase, O oh, oh, Father. Said, and Holy take Ghost. your glory, take your glory. Amen. Manda Gasha Katariana. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Amen. thank you, thank you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Yeah. Last week lesson we were do, we were talking about going through pain to accomplish our purpose. And in that lesson we were looking at David and David going through his preparation. Amen. The preparation that God had him on, that preparation journey. To bring him to his destiny to bring him to his purpose and this week we are dealing we want to talk with we want to talk about his trials now in getting there I did some research and it is interesting that when we go through trials there are things that we go through for a purpose to present itself with so many so many hurt, so many disappointment, but in the end, it is all for the best. There is a song that says, diamonds are a girl's best friend. And when we look at a diamond, for those that are privileged to see it in the stores, diamonds are owned by riches, by people who are rich and wealthy, kings, queens, royal, people of prestige, people of position. And when you look at a diamond and you realize where the diamond come from, a diamond has to go through pressure. The perfection of a diamond is because it went through pressure. Diamonds start out as carbon and it is in the layer of the earth and that carbon goes through the pressure and and my research shows that the the heat of the earth is between 2000 to 7000 degrees fahrenheit that's the that's the heat that that goes through 
No, I'm going to stick up in there because I want to give a comparison with heat and degrees. Today was very hot. We all agreed that it was very, very hot today. And when we look at heat, there's a song that says 96 degrees in the shade, meaning that the heat that was experienced in the Caribbean sometimes is 96 degrees. Now, when I look at um, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fiery furnace, I did some research with fiery furnace. Did you know that when you're talking about fiery furnace, the degree of heat is about 3,000 degrees. It's 3,000 degrees in a fiery furnace. So when we are looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fire that they were, they were thrown in, it was about 3,000 degrees. Now the diamond is between 2,000 to 7,000 degrees. So you can, you can imagine the heat that that carbon goes through and the pressure the carbon goes through and the million of years that it goes through that pressure, 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 heat, heat, heat. And that carbon, because of the pressure, because of the heat, because of all the environment, the harsh environment, it becomes a diamond. And this, my study shows that when the diamond is in the, the surface, the deep surface of the earth, it takes a vol volcanic eruption that pushes it. The, the diamond is not fin finished yet. You know. It's pushed up through volcano to come up to the surface. And that's how we get diamonds. Now I say that to say because when I look at the word diamond, I, I looked it up again. Did you know that the Greek word for diamond is invincible? Did you know that? The Greek word for diamond is invincible. So when you are going through pressure, when you are going through the heat, when you are pushed to that point and you become a diamond, you are what the, what, what the Greek says, invincible. Amen. Now, when you look at a diamond, a diamond can only scratch another diamond. A piece of glass cannot scratch a diamond. That is how precious the diamond is. That is how unique the diamond is. If you put a diamond in 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit heat, it will not burn. It takes a degree Fahrenheit of 1,300 degrees to make a diamond start to melt. 1,300 degrees of Fahrenheit heat that you have to put a diamond in before it can burn. Amen. Now, it's beautiful, it's delicate, but it's actually the strongest and the hardest natural substance on earth. Now, when I looked at the diamond and what the diamond, what it had to go through to, to produce, what, what the carbon had to go through to produce a diamond, for every person that goes through that trials, the fiery trials, we start out like that carbon, basic carbon, but the pressure, the heat, the, the environment that you go through, the test, the trial that you go through, brings us to what we become, we become a diamond and we are invincible. Amen? Amen. So when we are going through trials and tribulation, know that it is for a greater purpose. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Now, when I went through all of what, what David went through, I'm going to start with the many attempts that Saul tried to kill him. And I found in the Bible 11 attempts where Saul tried to kill David. Yes. He tried to take away the purpose that God had for him. And every time he tried to take out David, every time he tried to murder David, God always came to his rescue. Amen. And when God have a purpose for you, and your enemy is trying to take you out, know that the God that we serve, Amen. you hold on to him. He is going to carry you through for your purpose. David is called a man after God's own heart. You find very few people that will ever be called a man after God. Uh, Abraham was called a friend of God, but David was called a man after God's own heart. 
And David continued to act with wisdom. When the wisdom poured on him, he continued to act with wisdom. He held on to God because his purpose was already there. Amen. It's like you meet, a, you meet a prophet and a prophet is going to prophesy over your life and say, well, this is going to happen to you. This is going to God, the God, God show me this, God show me this. A lot of people walk away with their prophecy and does nothing about it. They, they, they hear the prophecy on, on their lives, but they don't do anything about it. Many people have died without accomplishing their purpose. And they say, oh, the prophet lied, the prophet this, that. But if you get a prophecy over your life, you have to protect your prophecy. You have to guard it. You have to do something to, for it to be manifested. You can't sit back and say, oh, the man of God prophesied over my life. Let's say the man of God say you're going to be a millionaire. The man of God say you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be X, Y, Z. And you sit back and say, oh, I'm just going to wait on it. It's not going to happen. Yes. It is never going to happen. What the man of God is doing, he hears from God. He relates what God is saying to you. But you cannot sit back and say, okay, because God said it's going to happen. It doesn't work like that. You have to, first of all, protect your prophecy. And you have to work towards it. God, anoint, God told Samuel, go and anoint David. Samuel anointed David. But David did not become king until until, uh, uh, until he was in his 30s. And David was 15 was it, when he was anointed. So David had to do his part. Amen. But in the process, he was, he was going through trials. He was going through temptation. But David didn't stop. The thing that I love about David is one. The Spirit of God was upon him and David was wise. David acted wisely. David did not act recklessly and say, oh, because I am anointed king, I'm just going to sit back. No, because the enemy wanted to take away his purpose from him. Remember, David, the ancestry of David, David's ancestors was, Jesus, was Joseph. Did you know that? Uh, there was there was generations and generations and generations and Joseph is connected to King David so the purpose for David was for him to become the great 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 grandfather of Jesus so in his in 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 him being crowned as king in the physical he became a physical king the birth of a spiritual king came out of it and the enemy knew that. That is why David was, the, the, the fight was for David not to receive the kingdom. Are we together? Amen. Now let us look at the different attempts on David's life by Saul. If you have your Bible, please look at 1 Samuel 18, 18. 1 Samuel 18, 18. The Bible talks about when, when, when Saul threw the spear at, at, at David. Read. And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And what is my life? Are my father's family in Israel, that I should be son in an hospital king? That was when the, 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 the king told David, You are going to be my son in law. And David is like, why why you chose me why did you chose me to be your son-in-law and we we dealt with that story last week when he fought the the, the 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 philistines and he won the second attempt the plot when david when saul plotted with his enemies to do away with david first samuel 18 17. And Saul said to David, Behold my elder daughter Mira, will, will, give, will I give thee to wife? Only be thou violent for me, and fight the Lord's battle. For Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him, but the hand of the Philistines be upon him. So, 
Saul was planning to kill David, but to send him into battle so that his hands would not be soiled. So he was sending him into battle, hoping that he would have died under the guise of fighting for Israel. So that was his plan, the second plan, to take out David. The third plan, 1 Samuel 19. 1 Samuel 19, verse 1. But it came, but it came to pass at the time when Mirab Saul's daughter should have been given to David. 1 Samuel 19. Saul spoke to Jonathan. 1 Samuel, verse 19. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I just said. Okay, read it. But it came to pass at the time when Mirab Saul's daughter should have been given to David. 1 Samuel 19. He mm -hmm. said, And Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and all his servants, and they should kill David. 1 Samuel 19. 19. Okay. I have, and Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan saw son delighted much in David. So he didn't, he didn't heed to his father's um, advice to kill David. So that's the third attempt. The fourth attempt is in 1 Samuel 19.10. Read it if you have it. First Samuel 19, 10. 10. And Saul sought to smite David uh -huh. even to the wall with the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence and he smote the javelin into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. Okay, so he tried to kill him with his spear. That is the fourth attempt. The fifth attempt, first Saul. First Samuel 19:11. Saul also sent messengers, messengers on to David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. Remember last week we spoke about when Saul gave Micah, his daughter, to David. Now, when David realized that your father is going to kill me, Micah, I need to get out of here. And Micah, what Micah did, Micah took some the pillows on the bed, put it on the bed, and pretended that it was David. And David fled. When her father came into the room and realized that it wasn't David, he told his daughter, you have betrayed me. You have betrayed me because he believed that his daughter would have helped him to kill her husband. And her da the daughter, Micah, decided, I am going to side with my husband. At that time, she was on his side. So that's the fifth attempt. The sixth attempt, Saul sent a messenger to bring David back so that he could kill him. The, second, the seventh attempt, Saul sent messengers again to kill David. To kill David. This is in 1 Samuel 19, 20. 1 Samuel, say, say 1 Samuel 19, 20. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul. And they also prophesied. Good. So Saul sent his messengers to kill David. What God did, God allowed the spirit, his spirit to come on his messengers. And mm -hmm. the, the, each messenger started to prophesy. The same messengers that was what was sent to kill David, God, spirit came upon them. So they were unable not only to kill David, but they began prophesying. Later, David came, and the Spirit of the Lord fell on, uh, on Saul as, as well. Saul came, and Saul is saying, but I sent you to kill David. What is happening? Why are you prophesying? And the Spirit of the Lord fell on Saul as well. Amen. But 
I want you to read from, I want you to read the same First Samuel 19, 24. This is what, this is what God does to your enemies. And he stripped off his clothes. Off he his... being Saul. Go ahead. Nineteen twenty. Start, start, start with, start with twenty three. Start with twenty three to get a better picture. Start with twenty three. And he went to visit us to Nios mm -hmm. in Ramah, mm -hmm. and the spirit of God was upon him. Also. That's Saul. Mm -hmm. And he went on and prophesied until mm -hmm. he come to Nios in Ramah. Say it again. And he saw went out and prophesied. He was prophesying because the spirit of the God, God is now upon Saul. Remember, an evil spirit was on Saul. But when God realized, oh, you're going after my son, you're going after David, I'm going to fix you. And so the spirit of the Lord rested on Saul. So Saul had no other choice but to be led by the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost dropped on Saul, he began to prophesy. Read. And he stripped off his clothes also. Repeat and, that. And he stripped off his clothes. Repeat also. it again. And he stripped off he his clothes. He stripped also. off his clothes. Saul stripped off his clothes. Continue. And prophesied before Samuel in the like manner. And laid down naked on And and laid down naked all, all day all day and all that night wherefore they say is Saul among us prophets stick up in there your enemy is chasing you your enemy is chasing you your enemy is chasing you God comes to the rescue God didn't have to touch Saul. God didn't have to touch nobody. Mm -hmm. Spirit of the Lord rests on the enemy Saul. Boom! And the Bible said he stripped off his clothes. Amen. What does that signify? Whenever you are stripped, remember, God stripped and ripped the kingdom from Saul. He ripped the kingdom from him. No, he, he, he allowed Saul to strip himself naked. Now, when we are talking about nakedness, we are talking about not being covered. We are not covered. When you have somebody praying for you, when you have God, you have a covering. Yeah. Remember we talked about covering when we first yeah. started. When we talk about having, having a spiritual father, having a father, having a husband. We talk about covering. When God covers your nakedness. Yes. In, this, in, this, in this situation, you have the enemy coming after God's chosen one. Because David was God's chosen son. God's chosen sheep. God's chosen shepherd. And God allowed his enemy... To strip himself. God didn't strip him. The spirit of God was upon him. He prophesied. And it is Saul that took off his own clothing. Saul took off his own clothing. Amen. And the Bible said he lay down naked. Not for a second. Not for a minute. He lay there naked as he's born. All day and all night. Now, what you need to understand is when, when, when you are talking about nakedness, it is talking about you revealing your whole self. You have no covering. You have no protection. You are just out there. Boom. And with your nakedness, it brings shame. With your nakedness, it brings you it brings you to a position where you have to bow. It brings you to a position where you have to hide. Yeah. You see when people are, 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 are stripped and you see them in movies where people are naked and, 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 and you see them covering themselves, but they are always covering the, 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 the private part. If the woman, the woman is like that and the man, they're covering because there is a shame involved in nakedness. Yes. And that's what God did to Saul. Saul kept on chasing after David. David did not touch Saul. 
David kept every opportunity David had to deal with Saul. When David came to the, to the, to the cave and David clipped off a piece of his, his Saul clothes and said, I could have killed you when they were at the, the, the tunnel and he took the water bottle. He said, Saul, I have your water bottle. I could have killed you. Yeah. So many opportunities, but I did not kill you because you are God's anointing. I cannot touch God's anointing. Yes. Saul, on the other hand, was trying to touch God's anointing. So both of them were anointed. Both of them were anointed. But David understand the principles of anointed. The Bible said, touch not my anointed, nor do my prophet no harm. These are yes. principles in, 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 the, in the kingdom, in the heavenly kingdom. Touch not my anointed. Amen. David understood that principle. And even though David was anointed, David understood that he is still, I still see you as the king. Yes. I still, my, he calls Saul my father. My fa I, I can't touch you, my father, because you are anointed and I cannot touch you. The Bible yes. says that even to the end, when, Dave, when, when, when Saul died, and one of his servants boasts and said that he killed Saul, which was a lie, because Saul fell on his own sword. The Bible says that he came and he boasts to David, I killed Saul. And David said, you did what? You killed Saul anointed? And David had him killed. David said, no, 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 no. That is God's anointed. Even though David had the opportunity to kill Saul, David did not. Because yes. he understood the principles. So when David came up, and David saw Saul prophesying. That was the hand of God. And that is why when, we, when David speak about, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff is with me to comfort and protect me. And he's speaking about God. When David says, you, you set me at the head of a table in the presence of my enemies. All of those things that David went through, it is in all of his Psalms. Because what David went through was the trial was the test to get to his purpose. Yes. And what God did, God stripped his enemy. Yes. And God not only stripped his enemy in the presence of other people. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemy. God stripped Saul. God allowed Saul to naked himself, not only before David, but before everyone that was there. Yes. Yeah. And Saul was naked for the entire day and the entire night. That is what God does for you. He strips your enemy. He removes the clothing from your enemy. And he brings them to a nakedness to their needs. Amen. May our enemies, may our enemies be stripped. May our enemies become Amen. naked. May our enemies bow before us Amen. in Jesus' name. So I, 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 I had to look at that particular, I had, to, I had to zero in on that because it was, it was so profound, so profound. Now, there are several other instances, like I said, um, that, that David, tests and trials that David went through. Now, the ninth, uh, the ninth time he tried to kill um, David, Saul, was in 1 Samuel 19.22, we read that. And then in 1 Samuel 23.15, if you have it, read it please. 1 Samuel 23.15. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Zip in a wood. All right. I'm going to take it back a little bit more. Now, when David was in the was running from from Saul, David realized that he needed to seek help from other countries. David sought sought the counsel of God, and David asked God if he should fight and help some people called they were they were they were the Kilal people. Now that's in 23, 1 Samuel 23. The Bible says, they told David saying, behold, the Philippines fight against the Kia and they robbed the, thresh the thresholds. David inquired of the Lord and said, shall I go and smite these Philist Philistines to help 
the Kilal people. And David and the Lord told him, the Lord, he inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, go and fight for them. After David fight for them against the Philistines, the same people that David defeated, the same people that David helped, they turned against David. They turned against him. And because David, because David kept close relationship with God, because David kept in contact with God, David said, you know, I need to inquire of God. Because if David didn't inquire of God, they would have, they would have sent him out to Saul. And David said, I help these people. I, I helped them. I fought for them. I gave my life for them. The Philistines would have, would, have, would, have, would have killed them. The Philistines would have destroyed them. But I asked God to help. And God allowed me to help you. And after God allowed him to help them, they turned back on David and were prepared to hand him over to Saul. And David knew. His spirit felt it. And David said, I, I he felt something. Amen. David went back to God and said, are they going to sell me out? Are they going to betray me? And God said, yes, they're going to betray you. So think about this. You are David. You are running from Saul. You find some people that need help. You find some people that need refuge. Because remember, David was a mighty, valiant man of war. Yes. And when they came to David and they sought help, David didn't go and help them just like that. David said, you need help, but I am going to go to God first. I'm going to get the okay from God. Remember, the, 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 there is a saying that said, lean onto your, not onto your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways, and he will direct your path. David allowed God to direct his path, and he went to God and said, Shall I, should I help them? God said, they need help. Go and help them. And here is David. Imagine you are David. You have your own stress to deal with. The king of Israel is hunting you down. The king of Israel is want to kill you. And here is some people that need your help. Instead of David saying, okay, I need to, you all need to deal with your own problems. I have my own stress. David was not selfish. He wasn't selfish. He said, you all need help. But before I give you the help, I'm going to my God. Let, let, let God direct my path. If, he's, if he wants me to help you in this battle with the Philistine, I'm going to go to him for counsel. David went to him for counsel. God said, go ahead. And after David did all of that, not only fighting physically, he was fighting spiritually because David was in connection with God. He was in, he was in tune with God. So he's not only fighting on his own, he's fighting with God, which is the greatest, greatest entity that can ever fight for you. And after how oh, David did all of that, the same people that he fought, the same people that he saved, the same people that he defended, the same people that he gave his life for, the same people that he put aside all his stress and went and did for fight for them. The same people was planning to hand him over to Saul so that Saul could have killed him. That is what David went through. Mm. So when you have your battles and your trials, know that you are going through it, you're pressured, you're going through the heat, you're going through the fire, you're going through it to become a diamond. Whenever Whenever we are faced and confronted with what David was confronted with similarly, know that it is for the purpose. Are we together? Amen. So I'm not going to take up too much of, of, of your time. Um, uh, is there anything that you um, want to discuss? Anything where I always stop here and have a little discussion? To highlight anything, I don't want to be the only one that is talking. I I believe that um, I believe that David understand about reward mm -hmm. and blessings, mm -hmm. and um, understand also about um, the Lord's anointed, mm -hmm. and also understand about endurance, mm -hmm. and I believe because of these things David was um, comfort by the scripture that I believe that he would have used 
is um, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now when the Lord is directing your path and you understand these assignments that God has given to man and you are seeing an individual is operating in these dimensions, you understand that there is something is happening there. Mm -hmm. So the will of God must be on one of them. Amen. So, so if, if Saul carries the anointing and David is now coming up and Saul begin to fight David, then you realize that one is taking over. Mm -hmm. You understand? And to take over, there will be a fight in the realm of the spirit because the enemy don't want David to take over because he understands the prophetic power and grace and truth upon David's life. And so, in this situation, you can look at the old prophet and the new prophet. Uh -huh. You know, when God sent out the new prophet and tell him, say, the young prophet, don't eat. Yes. You know, but the old prophet said, eat. Yes. You see, because he understand that there was someone that was coming. Yes. That, that is great. And look, man, I'm an old prophet and this man wants to take over. I am going to try to put a spokes in his wheel. You see, so that's why the Bible says, you know, he, he that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. And so the young prophet never wait and he died. But David understand about the waiting process and waiting in love, waiting in obedience and allow God to take out his enemies and he become victorious. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Great story. To me, that is it. Keep me whole well, we go yeah, there to your, 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 your perspective. Well, that is, that is, that is a more say, but he you put it, he, he put you it put in, a, he put it in a modified version. <laughs> but I, I was going to say, it's good that um David had trust in the Lord mm -hmm. when he asked the Lord. If he was going to sell them out, or if he should help him, it's to show that he had a kind of sense of com comfort to talk mm -hmm. to the Lord. Yes. And I think that what some of us lack comfortability, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we're talking into the Lord, mm -hmm. or actually, because some of us, like Daddy was preaching the other day, and he was saying, the Lord is always talking, but we just don't listen. Mm -hmm. So I feel like. Some of us, when we're talking to the Lord, we, we just talk and we don't wait for, for him to respond to us. Mm -hmm. But David had that, that bond with the Lord, so he and him could talk about anything. Mm -hmm. He and him could socialize about anything. Mm -hmm. And the Lord would be his, let's say, like how you were saying, guidance with the sheep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was basically mm -hmm. saying. But well, mm -hmm. how, do we get, how do we get to that point to have that relationship to hear from him. And that's when we started the first lesson where we were talking about relationship, we were talking about communicating, communi God, God communicating with us. Yes. The God that we serve is, 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 is such an amazing God. I, I remember a time I was feeling down. This was a couple months, maybe last year. I was driving, I, I was driving to work. And this just dropped in my spirit. I, I, I saw like a little cartoon with this huge guy trying to squeeze into this tiny little thing. It's just an image that came up. And I knew it didn't come from me. And I just saw the huge guy, it was a cartoon character, the huge guy was trying to squeeze into this little car. And I, I burst out laughing. If anybody saw me in that car, they would have thought that somebody was in that car, car with me. Yeah. Uh, the picture that, that the Holy Ghost gave, I just laughed. He, God have a sense of humor, and he have a way to, to cheer you up, to lift you up. To just make a peace come over you it, it is it is amazing and even in this small little things god is speaking mm -hmm. god is speaking yeah. it's it's like it's like uh, pastor said god is always speaking and and, and that's in job it's a god the job said god is always speaking just that man is not listening and and god speaks to his prophets god speaks to songs god speaks to worship god speaks to the word he speaks in in in, in signs and little things that you see. Sometimes I, 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 I sit, I like nature. And the reason why I like nature is because I get close to God. I would just come outside and I was just, I would look at the sky. And just looking at the sky, 
I start praising God because I see things. I look at the moon, I look at the sun, and I praise God because he created it. I feel the breeze, I look at the trees, simple things. And I see God in these little things. It rains and there is a rainbow. I see God because I remember that the Bible says, I will never destroy the earth again by sending the rainbow. So it's the little things that we see God and he is always speaking. Hello. I, I, I could relate to what you're saying because the other day when we was in the kitchen, because the other day when we was in the kitchen, me, you, and mommy was in the kitchen and then you start making jokes. At that point there, I was, before you start making the jokes, I was kind of reflecting on something and I was feeling bad. Yeah. So I feel like the Lord had knew that I was feeling bad. So he put that kind of comfort and that kind of feeling on daddy to come to, to cheer up my me, me spirit, my me soul. So I feel like the, doc, the Lord don't only speak to us, in ways, but he shows little signs to help comfort us and yes. help make us better. Amen. He does. Glory to God. He does. He does. And if there is any no more comments, I'm going to close off this very short lesson for tonight. And um, I want to thank you all for participating. Um, Amen. Glory to God. And give glory, glory, glory to God in all that he's doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Set my mind made up, and I won't turn back, because I want to see my Jesus someday. Set my mind made up, and I won't turn back, I want to see my Jesus someday. Set my mind made up. And I won't turn back, cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Set my mind made up, and I won't turn back, cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Yes, my mind made up, and I won't turn back, cause I want to see my Jesus Someday, I set my mind made up, and I won't turn back, cause I want to see my Jesus someday. You know, as I sit there and I, I listened to the teaching, I, I really enjoy teaching, really enjoy teaching, and I give him God the glory. Watch the thing on the camera, amen. I always give thanks and praise for teaching on Thursday night. Amen? Because it has brought me joy. It has brought me gladness. It has brought me to a place where I understand that I am not alone. I, uh, someone is with me. You know, and when I look at the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul, ah uh, Jesus, my soul cry out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I mean, when, when you look at what we have gone through and, and where, we are, where we are coming from, we have to give God glory. We have to give him praise. We have to lift him up. We have to honor him because it's, uh, the songwriter says, it's grace and mercy that brought me through. I am living this moment because of you. I want to thank you. I want to praise your God for your grace and mercy Amen. that carry you through. Sometimes I, I am down and I'm, I, I just think, you know, even this week I'm, I'm just quiet. I'm just looking at everything. I'm talking to the Lord and, and I'm just moving forward. But the song that, you know, rests in my mind even as I stand here says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. I keep praying as the onward bound. Lord, plant my feet and I have grown. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith and keen and stable land. I have grown a place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet and I have grown. 
So my heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fear dismay. While some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my hymn is higher ground. Oh God, I, I, I need to lift up the Lord. I, I need to magnify him. I, I, need to, I need to let him know that we love him. We love him. And one can put a thousand to fly. Two can put ten thousand to fly. We are more than one and more than two. We can lift up the name of the Lord in, in, in such a way that the gates of hell can't walk near our place. I'm telling you. And so as we come forth to prayer meeting, we come to learn. We come to listen to the word. We come to, to feed on the word, digest the word. And so that we can be a better person, better people, better nation. That is what we are here in Bible study for. Amen. Those on social media, social platform, we love you. As you continue to watch Christ Followers Deliverance Ministry here in Antigua, we we happy that you are on board. And we are looking forward this Friday night to see you online. All night prayer meeting. We're going to shop some tongues. Mando, bro, shakata. Lord Jesus, tell your friend, tell your family that Friday night from 11 o'clock, Apostle Osborne, Prophet Osborne will be on Facebook and the social media live from 11 o'clock praying, pulling down things and destroying things. The glory of the Almighty God will touch your home and touch your family and your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are about to, to close. But let me tell you social media, you can go to Dave Osborne Ministries.org and you can find us there. Or Christ Followers Deliverance Ministry.org You can find us there. Amen. And if you want to be a part of the the sowing the seeds and the giving and the blessing to the ministry, developing, helping develop the ministry in, in, in um, giving for the building fund and all these things. You can go to Cash App and you can just type in Christ Followers Deliverance Ministry or you can type in Dave Osborne Ministries or you can type in the telephone number 347-981-3197 or you can go to PayPal. Amen. Glory to God. And as you go to the website, you will see everything there. Or you can go to Facebook where you are right now. Tell your friend, tell your family about the things that is going on here in Antigua. God is moving mightily and the church of the living God will go on. Whether you come with me or you don't come with me, God will move us anyway. And God will take us to the place where we want to get in Jesus' name. Amen. Social media, God bless you all. I release the blessing of the Lord upon you. I release power and grace and truth upon you. Looking forward to see you on Friday night. Amen. In the all night prayer meeting. Amen. And um, Sunday morning service. Amen. It's going to be a revival. Tell your friend, tell your family that we are going to be here and we are going to be lifting up the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all social media. I see you on Friday night and Sunday morning. In Jesus name. Amen.